Hey everyone, happy Friday. My name's Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time when we can relax and craft together and work on a project for about an hour. And we work on the projects from beginning to end all the way through. So right now we one of our projects is we're working on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. Uh, you can find out info on that at the, at thesplendidsampler.com. And uh, today we are going to start Block 14 uh, Fruit Bowl by Joe Avery here. It is adorable. We're going to be doing some applique and some curved piecing. So I do not do curved piecing very often, so that'll be interesting. We'll do that today. And I'm going to try the tinfoil method for making these circle appliques. I have not done that before either. I've seen it online. Uh, I know you guys have been uh, talking about it, the tinfoil method. So we will try that today. So what I for sure want to finish within this hour is I want to get all my pieces cut out and prepared. Uh, just, just, you know, all the pieces ready for it. And I want to do at least one circle using the tinfoil method and I want to do at least one of these curved uh, pieces. So that is the plan for tonight. Uh, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get started here. Uh, just check this post for all the links and for all the product links as well. So thanks guys! Gonna flip you around. Let's get going. Yeah, curved piecing makes me a little nervous too, Joe, but we're gonna do it. Oh yeah, so Gretchen, we had Tons of crazy storms yesterday. I mean, I wasn't on yesterday and that was kind of half the reason. I was just really exhausted still from, uh, we've been doing just a ton of traveling. And uh, man, we had tornado watches and flood warnings and all sorts of crazy yesterday. Uh, so, okay, and we had our power go out a little bit. Oh, Diane, thank you very much, I appreciate that. All right, guys, here is our fruit bowl. Uh, let's start by grabbing our fabrics. Uh, again, I'm using kind of those pale blonde colors. So let's pull those out and, uh, and a thing of white. So my backgrounds, my little rules for this quilt are my background, when there's a clear background, is always going to be um, this white. And then I'm using like these pale, <laughs> this is just, this is just becoming an absurd piece of fabric here. <laughs> Luckily I have a lot more white, so it'll all work out. I'm just trying to get it to look like a square here. Okay, here we are. Oh my God, is that for serious Joe Frost warnings tonight? I went out a, for a little bit today and it was, it, it had the crispness of winter. Like, I could smell. I don't know. If you guys ha experience seasons uh, like, like we have in the Midwest, there is a point when there is a crispness and it just smells a little bit like, like snow. And um, it had that smell today. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Yes, yeah, so these circles are applique. These circles are pieced. Or these... these um, uh, arcs are pieced. So I was thinking for the bowl, um, maybe this, let's make it the bowl shape, maybe this kind of decorative, it's like a, a little decorative bowl. Oh yeah, you're three hours east, Joe. Man, so a lot of times we get, we get stuff before you guys, like a day. But yeah, sometimes it cuts, the storms cut up a little bit, so. Um, yeah, maybe we're going to get about the same tonight. All right, this is kind of what I was thinking about the uh, for the bowl. So in my brain, I'm thinking, okay, let's let's keep this guy, uh, the bowl, in a, our kind of real neutral, or our kind of tan color palette. And then maybe for the fruit, I get the brightest fabrics I have, like most citrusy looking fabrics. So I'm thinking that guy, you know, here's a good orange. Maybe that's one of our fruits. Now here, she says assorted fabrics for this, so I could do all five different colors, but she's doing um, only three. So these are the same, these are the same, and then I got one more, so maybe we do a few of the same. I'm just trying to, let's find those citrusy colors. 
see what we got going on here. Those are awfully cute. This one's fun. You know, we could do just five different ones too, which would be pretty neat. Ooh, there, that's, that's, yeah, I don't know if I like that one as much. I don't have much, I don't have a lot of that fabric, so maybe I should save that one a little bit. All right, let's, let's do three. Let's pick three of these. Maybe, uh, this one's the most citrusy, so I think um, I want to use that. These contrast each other pretty well. Like, I, they're distinct. Like, I can distinctly tell that this one's different from that, so I like that. Maybe this pale one. Yeah, I think this just kind of blends, merges with, like, this one a little. I think it's a little too close to that, so... Um, I think we'll do those. Joe, I have not, I have not done a pale, like all over lights, like the lights with the white background and the very light colors. I have never done a quilt like this. So that's, that's kind of like, kind of the challenge I gave for, gave myself for this quilt was like, can I do a quilt that's not all bright colors, <laughs> basically. Um, and that, that, um, Oh, this is, I think I used some of this one. I have two things of that. And that's just pale, like a low contrast quilt. So uh, that's, that's the challenge for me, for sure, with this one. All right, so these are gonna be our fruits. We'll do, I think we'll do this guy in front. So this will be our bright yellow citrus one. So yellow will be yellow. And then it looks like we have a large one and a small one of each of the other ones. So we'll do a large and small of this and a large and small of this. So I'm going to just set those aside for now. And, oh, I'm missing one. Oh, wait, didn't I have brown? Oh, yeah, right here. The tan. I could do this for the bowl part and have a decorative kind of lip. Should I do that instead? I don't know. I think the, I think the... Decorative bowl should be fancier. Let's do that. Will the bowl be fancy and the lip be this, this kind of darker color, less fancy? I got all the pieces from my stash, Joe, and that's kind of why um, I, I was just looking for neutral colors in my stash, but it ended up that most of my neutrals and most of my light neutrals were all these kind of pale yellows. So that's why this is kind of turning into a pale yellow quilt with a little bit of uh, tan neutrals. So yeah, it's all for my stash. I've been totally on board with the using up all the things lately. Um, so these are these are from my stash. Okay. So uh, um, now here's a situation again where we are cutting our fabric to the exact size of what we need, which you know ideally makes sense. But we are doing appliques. And we're doing it curved piecing and those can sometimes err on the side of we use a little bit more fabric like in here we might use a little bit more fabric than we might need in the in our seam allowance by accident and here when we do appliques it might um, pull in on the background a little bit more so this is one of those cases where I want to add um, I want to add some extra edging. So instead of this ending up being six and a half inches, we're going to try and get it to be seven inches um, and then we can cut it down, I think. Um, so let's see, I'm going to just do some math when we do this. I lost my pencil, it's here somewhere, but we're going to use a big old marker today. Um, yeah, a, re a little red. I mean, some some brighter color would be great. In this, for sure, it could be really fun. But again, I'm trying to do this pale quilt, so I'm not doing a whole lot of bright colors. The only time I'm using bright, contrasty colors is like every fifth um, block. So our next, this is, we're, we're on block 14, so block 15, I'll probably do, um, I'll probably add a bright little color in it somewhere. So for now, I'm sticking to the pales. So, okay, one cream print square, that's gonna be our white. Uh, we need a six and a half inch square and it's cut down to um, three and a quarter by uh, six and a half. So I'm going to actually make this, that's for this square up here. I'm going to actually cut it to seven inches. So we're adding a quarter inch here and here. 
and I only need to add a quarter inch to this top piece. So we're going to make it instead of three and a quarter, I'm going to make it three and a half. So I'm going to cut a piece and you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to cut a piece of what I need here. The three and a, the three and a half by seven inch, uh, setting aside the remainder for the concave shapes. I mean, this is kind of a crazy messed up block. I'm just going to, bring this block over and make my concave shapes. So we'll, we'll do that next. So right from this one, all I need is to cut this. So that's a seven inch by an, a, a three and a half inch um, piece. So let's do that. This clearly needs a little bit of pressing. I wonder if this is seven inches. If that's seven inches, then we are in a good place. Oh, perfect. So I can get a seven inch by, um, what was it? Three and a half inch bit from this glob right here. So I'm going to do that. Let's get to the uh, um, iron. Pop up over here. I have my uh, my Reynolds wrap, my tin foil right here, ready to do our um, our foil method for our circle appliques. So I'm I'm excited to try that. Have not tried that before. I know it's a favorite way for a lot of people. So I'm going to do that. Ooh, you saw that someone had actual fruit shapes that they used. Oh, that's a sweet idea. I saw that someone did kitties too. Or they turned all the little circles into kitties. I'm all about that. More kitties, better. Oh, you found fabric with actual fruit. Oh, I think that'd be so sweet, Gretchen. I don't think it would be um, tacky. I think it'd be um, just really cute. Oh, you're not saying you think it'd be tacky fruit, like a fruit design. All right, this is looking like a pretty good straight edge, so I'm going to just call that a straight edge. And now we need a three and a half. So I'm going to have to get my big ruler out here. One, two, three and a half. So again, remember, I'm adding a quarter inch to the top here. Grab my rotary cutter. One, two, three and a half. Okay, and then we'll use some other chunks off of here for the concave shape. Let's just call it from here. So I'm going to just give, give ourselves another pressed area so I don't have to do that later. Actually, maybe, maybe let's do those concave shapes when I'm done with this one. Um, all right, let's trim this down to the seven inches. I'm just going to give it a good edge on this side. And then we'll, um, just to square it up nice, and then I'll measure the seven inches the other way. All right, get rid of that little tiny piece. Okay, now I gotta do seven inches this way. Line up along an edge, there we go. Okay. So this is my, um, I'm going to have that raw edge be at the top, but this is my, my piece that will be, uh, that's, that's this chunk here. So, um, I think while we're at it, why don't I cut the pieces for these concave shapes. I know that's not till, I read through these instructions, it's not till we're over here, but I'm gonna cut them out already. And how I'm gonna do that, just cause I have this fabric out. So how I'm gonna do that is with a light table though. Um, and so, okay, let's take a look at this. Again, I wanna add the little bit around the edge just so I have like a seven inch square. So I need to, ha I need to add like a quarter inch here and here and here and here to have this be uh, the seven, you know, the extra, the extra quarter inch all the way around. So what that means is right here on this concave thing, I'm going to have to add extra here and there. And this one we don't have to have extra at all because that's not, it's not going over the edge, um, which is good because then we don't have to change these shapes, which are the important shapes here. Oh, thanks, Nolene. I got my my other little. My other little ring on. I should show you this. So I got this ring 
oh gosh, from a seller on Etsy. I don't remember what, but I like wearing it. it I, I kind of, it's like my Power Rangers ring, I feel like. So on the inside, I got it engraved with, um, uh, with that, uh, kind of that saying, I don't know if you guys can tell, but preparedness plus opportunity. I like, um, I like, uh, I like that kind of phrase, you know, that like what luck is, you know, you being, uh, doing the work and then opportunity combined. Right. So I like thinking about that every once in a while. So whenever I need to remind myself of that, I, I wear my ring. So it's like my power, my power rangers ring here. So, all right up here. And you know what? I don't have that pencil, like I said, so I'm going to just, I don't want to, I don't want to get, um, I don't want to get black permanent ink on my ruler here. So instead I'm going to use a water soluble marker and just give myself an extra quarter inch here, here and here. Okay. There we go. Oh, I can't see it over the edge here though. Oh yeah, I can kind of, it's right at the top of this copyright text there. So what I'm going to do is grab my light table. I think this is going to come in handy for me here and I'm going to put, um, put this on my fabric on top and trace this. And I could do it right side up for you guys. So I'm going to trace this shape onto, onto my fabric here. And then when I cut it out, I'm actually going to fold this in half so I can cut out my two pieces at once, just because I think that'll be a bit faster. And I'm going to cut it out by hand. I'm, I'm not going to like rotary cut these straight edges. We'll just, we'll just do it by hand. So, all right, I'm going to grab my water soluble pen again, and this we just extend out to here. Oh, wow. My uh, white fabric is really sucking up this pen. You know what? I think this is a new, a new marker. All right, so here's the important shape, the curve. So I'm just going to follow that as best I can. All right, how do we look here? I think we're, I think we're pretty good there. All right, there we be. I will move this guy and we'll use him a little bit later when we do that other side. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it like this so I can cut out both, both shapes at once. So I'm going to carefully do that right now. I'm going to get my awesome Kai scissors that can cut through anything. I love it. You know what? Let's just cut off all this excess to start out with. That's just going to get in our way. All right, but we're done with the white fabric then. Let's, we'll get these sides first. Actually, we'll just go around clockwise. How about that? Counterclockwise. All right. So this will work if you're using a pattern fabric too. Um, it'll actually work great because um, you'll fold it in half and you'll have mirror images of each other. It's it's equal on either side, so you can if you make them the same way, like both like you know this way and not the mirrored way, it's still gonna work. You just rotate it. Um, but if you're like fussy cutting it or something, this will give you a mirror a mirror image. All right, I'm, this is where I'm being careful. I'm cutting the concave edge. Rotate a little. Just gonna get it the best I can. You can actually just, if you're comfortable with a rotary cutter, you could just go zoop all along this edge too, but we're, we're doing it with the scissors. Okay, and this way. I'll use this scrap for a later block and cut down these edges. All 
OK, so we got those two pieces ready. These are going to be our concave uh, cave, like a cave, um, for the bowl, the bottom of the bowl. So white fabric is done. Here's that top again. I'm just going to set all of this to the side. OK. We are donezo with that. OK. Keep losing things. I'm in the tiniest space, and I'm still losing stuff. It's crazy. All right, so we are done with the cream. All right, so the navy piece, a navy piece, da -da 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 -da, one strip. Oh, so we got a little strip right here. That's, um, it's one and a half inches wide. So we're making a shape right here in the middle of our, our convex or our, our like curved pieces. So this is what we want. Um, so now here we want to add, we want to add a, a quarter inch on, on this edge. So we get that seven inches. So, all right. So it wants us to cut it to, um, one and a half inches to three. So we're going to do it three and a quarter inch. All right. Let's do it. This is the bowl. That is this uh, decorative swirly bit here. So again, I'm I'm not gonna cut the bigger piece and set aside those other shapes. I'm just gonna cut it directly from here somewhere. Um, all right. So one and a half by three and a quarter. Let's do it. This looks pretty well pressed, good enough in places. So. We'll just um, use it. Ooh, there's some weird, a weird little pull in there. So let's use this other side. Okay. I'm going to start by just squaring up this a little bit. Getting it all perfect. So again, one and a half by three and a quarter. So I just need to go to about here. Such a little piece. All right, so that side is square. Let's just get rid of those bits. And we'll rotate this. And one and a half by one and a half by three and a quarter. That'll line up. <laughs> Sorry if I'm not answering you guys' questions. If I if you had a question, just ask it again. I tend to get pretty focused during cutting, I feel like. During the measurements and cutting time. Okay, so that's the center of our bowl. That's this piece right here. Um, now let's just take care of those curved edges right away. So back to this side. So now here we don't need to add any, any extra um, because none of it's touching that edge. All we need is, what we need to focus on is this being that nice arch. So it matches up with, with this arch here. And actually this shape, this outer line here does not match up to this outer line. So you can't just take a square and cut it. The parts that match up is this inner line, the actual sewing line, that sewing line should match up with this sewing line. So those are the shapes that when overlapped should match. But okay, let's do that mirror image thing again here. So let's get the light table out. Throw this guy on there. Okay, and we'll trace this on. Um, let's trace to the white side, the wrong side. I'll trace one and then we'll we'll fold it over like like that. Let's let's do it on this side though. Yeah, I'll trace it. Trace it on the back. There, so I can just just see the edge of this line. Can still it can be a little difficult to see on a pattern fabric like this. So a light table comes in comes in handy. 
let's get this curve first. Concentration. Okay. And then these lines, the outer outer lines, outer edge. Perfect. Okay. Now I'll fold that in half and there you can see the line and we'll get our two shapes. And that should be, well, yeah, I think that might be it for our light table. So, all right, let's fold these in half again. We'll get that kind of mirrored image, which will be, oh, we'll get a little bit of a mirrored image. Oh, I used that part with that little flaw in there, but oh well. All right, I'm gonna, eh, I'll get this, I'll get this fold first, just so this whole thing relaxes a little bit, relaxes. Okay, we'll just trim that off. Okay, and now up that curved edge. Yeah, I gotta move my sewing machines in the way. There we go. Okay, I think that will do the job for us. So here we go. Here is going to be our bowl. Boop. And there. And we are done with that uh, swirly fabric. Man, it almost, it almost is going to look like it's going to blend into each other a little bit. That's kind of cool. All right. That guy. Let's set those aside. Set this aside. Now what? So that we got a good part of that done. That was um, getting those cut out is uh, good progress, I think. So, all right, we are done with that navy. Now all we need is this big blue strip here. So again, let's add add the quarter inch on either side. So we want that to measure. It looks like seven inches. Yeah, so we're going to do it one and a quarter inch by, by seven inches. And then the rest are scraps. So, okay, let's, let's do that. That was this tan. So we need one and a quarter by seven. So let's just trim that just like how we did the last one. Ooh, using up this fabric too. All right, let's get a square this edge up and we'll trim it from there. So seven inches by one and a quarter. So we'll use, we'll use this guy. Yep, this is almost seven inches here, so we'll just get a good, good cut strip. There we go, and I will cut that top edge so we have a good squared edge, one and a quarter. Okay, don't need to go too far, just like right there. Right, let's rotate this around and get our strip. Seven and one and a quarter. Ooh, this is gonna be a real little skinny bowl um, top. It's gonna be cute though. All right, and this way. There we go. All right, I think that is our main pieces except for the circles. So I'm going to I'm going to prep the templates for the circles first. Let's just lay this out just cuz why not. So here's the the top and then we'll have this side of the bowl and this side of the bowl. Ooh, like we can start seeing it come together. That's exciting. I always kind of love love doing this. Okay.
and there, and there. Oh, it's so sweet! Oh, I like these colors. I think this will be fun. We're gonna have this neutral bowl with all these poppy, poppy um, citrus guys coming out on top of there. Okay, love it. Fun. Okay. Let's set everything aside again. I don't think we'll need these strips till the last. Curve pieces. All right, let's prep these circles quick and uh, then then we can get to business here. I want to still tonight, I want to sew one of these curved lines, one of these curved pieces, and I want to do one circle using the uh, foil method. So uh, let's let's finish getting our circles ready. I'll, so I have all the fabric prepped and then then we want to do those two skills tonight yet, I think. So, and I've never done either of them, so that'll be kind of fun. Uh, all right. I am going to use a postcard as my template. I've already started using using this and look, we have a bunch of notes on the back from a different project, I think. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut out, I wanna cut out these two circles and I'm gonna trace uh, these two circles or kind of outline these two circles onto um, the postcard. And why I wanna use the postcard is that it's got some heft to it and a nice sharp edge so when I do the circle and I wrap tin foil around it, I'm not gonna lose my edges. Like if I just used freezer paper, I think, I think I'd lose my sharp edges. But first I need to trace them onto here and I'm gonna do that by just cutting these out first and tracing them on. I'm only gonna do, I'm only gonna trace one of each. I'm not gonna do, you know, I need, I need three large circles and, and two small circles, but I'm gonna use the same template piece for, for both of these, I think. So let's cut this all nice. So I don't think my light table will go all the way through my postcard. So I'm gonna just um, trim this and then kind of just draw around it onto the postcard. And again, I don't have my uh, a pencil, so I'm gonna just use my big old Sharpie. All right, large. Oh yeah, the Kai scissors. I'm using the Kai dressmaker scissors. And I think it's like the professional version of it. They have some cheaper ones as well. I don't know how well those work, but oh my God, it's definitely my favorite scissors. It cuts through everything like butter and it just makes like the smoothest sound when it when it cuts to just like it's like it's some oiled machine. It's just awesome. But yeah, uh, and, and like nothing, it doesn't take any pressure um, from my grip to like, like, I feel like I could cut with it for hours and not strain my hand at all just because it is just so sharp. And yeah, I, I think I, I should have a link to it in, in the Facebook post here. They are, they're not cheap, but holy cow, are they like the best amazing thing. So it's the Kai, uh, I have the 720 or 7230 and it's, I think it's the eight inch dressmaker shear. So the dressmaker means it's, it's got this flat bottom so you can put it flat on a surface and then like, then cut um, versus, you know, the scissors coming, blooping out um, both sides. Okay, we got these guys. Uh, let's trace them quick. Not trace them, but let's draw them quick onto our template areas. Let's use these parts that don't have pencil all over them. Um, okay, since I don't have um, my pencil, but let's, just so it doesn't move, let's just plop a piece of glue in the middle. <laughs> Good reason to use a little glue pen. Get that guy right there. Okay. I suppose I could just, well, I glued these down. I suppose I could just cut them out just like this. Why don't I just do that? I don't need to trace them. I got them glued down. I'll just cut around them again. They're like this. You know what? 
what I should have done was glued it down and then cut through both of both the paper and the template at once. That would have saved me some time, but oh uh, well. <laughs> uh, next time. That's why you gotta do stuff so you learn all those little tricks along the way. Like, oh, that was a silly mistake. Now I'm doing the work twice. So I'm trying to cut this as nicely as I can. I'm sure it won't be perfect, but because um, I do want, this is gonna be the edge that the fabric is wrapped around. So the fabric's gonna mimic whatever I cut out here. Hindsight, yeah, exactly. All right, so I don't, I don't need this on here anymore. Okay, so this is gonna be our large circle piece. I'm probably gonna use this three times. I don't wanna cut out more, so we'll just do We'll use the same one. I think that will work. And I'm just thinking right now, maybe we spray starch these guys too before we put them in the foil. Have you guys tried that? Spray starching first, I think that might work. I haven't tried this foil method before and, and so I'm excited to, to give it a go. We're gonna do that next here. All right, our pieces. Oh, Antoinette, I do have a I have a link to it um, in the in my posts, but it is um, it's the seven two three zero the Kai seven two three zero. It's like the professional grade one. Okay. So let's just grab our pieces. So we do not need to be perfect. We do not need to cut perfect circles for this. All I need is a good quarter inch. Oh yeah, Kai, C-A, or not C, K-A-I. That's, that's it, Valerie, yep. So this one I was just gonna do the one, the one circle. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put this on here and you know what, let's just glob another piece of glue on here. I just want kind of a rough, I'm going a little over a um, quarter inch just to make sure I have enough lip on this thing. So I'm just real quickly, oh, that's kind of close to a quarter inch. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Ah, come on, let's cut this way. Let's just hold it, how about that? There, so here's gonna be the one circle. I'll take it off right away. Let's, so I'm done with this fabric, which is great. I can get it out of my way. And now for each of the other two fabrics, I was gonna do one big and one small. So let's do both on this guy first. Ooh, have we used this one yet? Oh yeah, here's a little area. So let's do that again. It's kind of a little easier when you glue down. Glue it down a little bit there. Gluing it on the wrong side of the fabric. All right, let's... After we cut out these pieces so I don't have to have these big bulk pieces of fabric anymore, then we'll, we'll try this um, foil method. And I do still want to do the curve, one curve tonight. So we might go a little over. I'm trying to go quickly though, so we can still be done in an hour-ish still, but I think we might go a hair over. Oop, let's do the, let's do the smaller one of this one right away. But I do want to have all my pieces at least cut out so I'm not dealing with them. Um, not dealing with trying to remember which fabrics I'm using. Okay, there's not really enough space there. We'll go, we'll go up here. Blobs, working the blobs, exactly, Bonnie. Which is awesome, I love when we can, I love when we can make blobs look perfect when we're done. It's a little magical. Okay little piece that we can use later. 
All right, we got these two guys. It's coming together. And now we need oh, those guys in here. One of each of this fabric. This is that weird fabric that I have like a quarter yard, but a long yard, not a fat quarter. Why don't we go over this edge? Blob magic. It's blob magic. All right, one, and let's get this guy. My circle has a small or a sad face, this one. Oh yeah, there we go, <laughs> sad face. All right, out of here, fabric. Okay, we do need these uh, postcard circles to do the foil method. Um, first, let's take that glue off. Okay, so for the foil method, this is how um, it seems like it works. So we'll, we'll try with this guy here. But what it looks like is, um, you know, take a piece of foil. I'm just going to, I suppose I can just... We'll just tear a piece off. Actually, you know, maybe we'll use this whole piece. Yeah, we probably don't. I'm going to trim this down so it's kind of a big square. Maybe we'll use this for the smaller ones. Um, but the theory is, so I've seen this online, but I haven't tried it before. Um, in theory, you put your fabric into the foil and your template piece on top of it. And then you wrap the whole thing up, which wraps the edge around, and then you press onto the foil. And that's what's gonna, it's like we're pressing on, a, you know, um, the heat from the foil will help give us the curve too. So that's what we're gonna try. And then, you know, I don't have to do any stitching, I don't have to do any fancy um, turning of the piece or anything. Um, it should be a fast and easy way to do uh, to um, get this going. But I think I might spray starch it first, which I don't usually do, but I think it's gonna help us out with this. So I'm gonna just get a little rag here, um, just cause I don't wanna spray starch right onto my um, wool mat. And uh, here we go, let's give this a try. Hopefully this works. Okay, this is off. Stream. No, I don't want stream. It's kind of a leaky bottle, this thing, but let's give it a try. So I'm going to go over here so you guys can see. And let's just give that a little spray. And you know what? I think I'm going to press it a little bit before I put it against the foil. And okay, so now I'm going to wrap it up. It's still damp. Get that fuzzle out of there. And I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to center my circle here and then I'm going to, my template, and I'm going to wrap it around. And I'm just going to kind of go little by little. Kind of like I'm glue basting it a little bit. Just how I go little by little all the way around. Okay, so now in theory, I should just be able to scrunch this up. And you know what, maybe we'll just scrunch it up like this and I can just press along the edges. But there, so in theory, now I just press this, right? And uh, we should have little perfect edges. So I'm gonna press around the edge here. Make sure, really make sure that it's circles that you don't have any, any crazy points anywhere. And I think we're good. So let's, let's try this puppy. I haven't done this before. I don't think I need this anymore. Okay, I have my my irons all heated up. I'm just gonna go around the edge here, I guess. All right, 
I think this is all there is to it. And I'll take it out and I'll probably give it another little press. I'm not quite sure how long to keep it on here. Kind of cool. Cool method. In theory, ideally, I wouldn't have this mass of stuff on because then I could just press straight down. So I kind of have, have a little too much, bit too much foil, I'm thinking. But really, we only need the edge, right? All right, well, whoo, yep, that's hot. We'll go around one more time or not. And we'll see, <laughs> see how we did here. So let's, let's just open, open this up. You wanted to see this before you try it. I know, Don, I, I, I've only seen it before. So this is, this is my first time giving it a go. Clearly, I don't need all this tin foil. Um, so you know what? Let's just chop it off. <laughs> there we go. Then uh, I can maybe just go flat for my, for my next one. Oh, shoot, I ripped it. Well, I'm ripping all of it. I guess that means <laughs> we'll get a new piece of foil. But dang, that's looking good. I'm going to just give it a press. It's still a little wet, so I'm going to just press it again right now. That's a good looking circle. All right, and, and since I'm, um, yes, yeah, my swan left over. Uh, since it's starched, it should stay in this shape pretty well. I'm going to let it cool for a few seconds and I'll try, um, we'll do a, one of these smaller ones right away while this is kind of cooling. So this is probably too much, too much. We probably only need like a little, we probably just need probably a little bit smaller than that. So let's just quickly go around like so. All right, let's see how we do there. Um, all right, let's starch this guy again. Right side, wrong side. All right, oh, oops, let's make sure to get the edge. There's the sizzle. Okay. Get it in here. Ooh, my, uh, oops, sorry guys, I got a little. Ooh, man, things are falling everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Had to get something out of the way there. All right. Right side. It's hard to tell. I think that's the... Yeah, okay. Right side is down. Get that guy in there. And let's fold over the edge. And again, I think I'm going to try and go little by little. I think I might have pressed this one a little too much too. I, th I think it's dry already. All right, you know, I think it's kind of best to have that little bit in the center and make sure that around the edges are flat, as flat as you can get them. Make sure I'm getting all these. I don't want any little bloops out there. I want a nice sharp edge still. All right, let's give it a go. Ooh, here, off of the, off of that. So I think I can just, yeah, I can't quite squish it. I think maybe it's better not to squish it down in the center because then you have a little edge to kind of rotate it by and you're gonna have to unpick that edge anyway, unpick that to, to open it up. If I can smell the wool, I think the wool got a little starch on it. Hey Carol, we're working on block 14, the fruit bowl block from the Splendid Sampler 2, and we're we're attempting the foil foil method. So all right, I didn't do it that much on this one. Let's see see if it worked. Hot hot hot. You know what? It's probably a better idea for me to let this cool. Why don't I let that cool in there a little bit, and I will pick this out. So I can just just lift this lift this um edge up and and pull it out that edge should pop back in place because it is starched. Ooh, wow, it's sticking out of there. There we go. All right. 
pop back in place. Yeah, okay, so that is good. I definitely think starching is the way to go. Let's give this a final little press. Okay, so um, that works great. So I don't think I'm going to do all of them right now because I do want to do that curved piecing yet. So let's, let's, um, we'll set this guy aside and let's see how this guy worked out quick and then press him. And then we can do these other ones um, a little bit later in a, in a, like on, I don't know, in another session here. All right, I kind of. See, so I didn't, I didn't go slowly around the edges as much with this one, so I have a few little bloops, but, um, but this edge is good, so maybe we'll have that be the visible edge. Let's just give it a press. Yeah, I've never tried this method before, Carol, but dang, that was, it was really easy. <laughs> really easy to get a nice edge there. All right, let's pop this guy out. Should maybe let it cool a little longer, but, ooh, the starch. Man, yeah, the starch. Definitely do the starch with it. All right, that one looks good too. Again, this one had a little more points, a little more points in the circle. I went a little faster with this one. See, got some points. So when you do the tin foil, you do really want to go gradual around the edge like this so you can get all of, you know, you don't want to just fold over and then fold over because that's when you're going to get you know, kind of the messed up points a little bit. So little by little, that's what we did with this one and it looks so much better. But you know, we're gonna overlap some bits. So, you know, we can go like that and we'll be good to go. But woohoo, okay, that is that is a fun method. And it looks like it's really only good for one use with the tin foil. Um, it gets torn up. So you'll be using a little bit of tin foil, but pretty dang fun. All right, but we do have these pieces prepped so I can do the other bits later, and I have my template pieces here yet. So, yay. Okay, so I wanted to go over uh, tonight before, uh, before we head out, I wanted to do one of these curved piecing bits here. So here are, let's grab, let's grab a set. So, okay, we have, we have our kind of, Vex one and our concave one. And uh, that's on both sides, the water soluble, so that's fine. All right, I'm going to just give them a little press quickly, just for good measure. Um, I started block 13 already, so we did do a, a little bit, one session worth of block 13. That's the paper piece one, right? Um, I did do some of that, so that is, that's uploaded right now. Um, we did do the first couple bits of paper piecing. All right, so we are going to pin, we're going to do it this way, like it shows in the picture. We're going to have this as our base piece, and we're going to um, pin this one, this piece, to this piece. So the first thing I'm going to do, first thing that we need to do is line up what we really want to line up is wherever the center point of this guy is on the stitch line to the center point of this stitch line because those are the two important points that and the ends need to, to line up for this to work. So how I'm going to find that middle edge is I'm just going to fold it in half. Let's fold it in half. And I'm going to just finger press at least a quarter inch in, like just past a quarter inch. Because that quarter inch is our seam allowance, right? So there we go. We got, we got a little fold, fold line there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Finger press that. And there we go. So those are the centers that we need to line up. So I'm gonna just put this in front of me like that. Let's grab a pile of pins. So with curved piecing, I think it's um, the more pins, the kind of better. I know there's tricks for this too, but um, this is the kind of general way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up uh, these two lines and, and the edges here. So let's, let's match it up so I, got, I can see that line and this line. 
sure to get that good. Ah, stabbed myself. Okay. And I'm kind of lining up these points too to make sure that I'm kind of centered. And let's just throw a pin in there. Okay. So there we go. That is our first step. And now we just need to, we need to align this edge with this edge here. So we're just going to go little by little and pin these down till we get to the edge here. Actually, I think these, these need to match up. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pin the ends together. And so this edge, this, this con, uh, convex edge is actually going to have more fabric on the edge than, than this one is, because remember we're, what really lines up is those, um, is that quarter inch bit in. So this is going to be a little difficult. So we're going to just kind of stretch this top piece. Let's get it kind of in the center. So that edge is aligned. Let's try and get that bloop out of the way. There we go. And let's pin the center. Okay, so, so there we go. We got the pinned center there. And let's try and do, th that's probably enough on such a small piece, but if you're not sure about it, go for a couple more pins. And I'm trying to flatten out this top piece as I go as best I can, but I still want those edges to line up. So it's good to do this on a flat surface like this. All right, one more. And uh, um, one more. It may pleat a little, but if you move the fabric out of the way, like I'm kind of pushing the fabric down so that my sew line doesn't have any bloops as best I can, then you shouldn't have any pleats. But you are kind of stretching and manipulating this fabric. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different than doing two, you know, perfect um, straight lines on top of each other. This, you, you're kind of stretching the top and scrunching the bottom um, technically. So uh, there is an opportunity for some, some things to go weird. But like if I get, if I'm stitching and I have like a little pleat started, I'm just going to stop stitching and try and uh, flatten it out a little bit before stitching a little bit more. So all right, we got one side. We got to do that to the other side as well. So um, again, this is our center one. And... Uh, Let's match up those ends again. Oh, Kathy says, the feed dogs ease the baggy bottom. It's a miracle. Okay, perfect. That's what I want to hear. I don't do, I don't do curved blocks very often at all. So this is, um, this is, this is a skill I could, I could use some more work on for sure. So this is, this is good practice. All right, there we go. We got our ends. It looks crazy still, but again, let's just try and remember, the, let's stretch this top a little bit. Try and get those that edge to match up. Kitty scratch it into place a little bit. All right, and I'm still trying to get like where it really needs to match is be flat is like at that quarter inch. So let's throw a pin there on that quarter inch. All right, this one looks like it wants to be pinned down first. So let's do that. Some people are very good at doing this without any pins at all. Um, people who just know just the right amount to stretch and pull and, and, and uh, move things around, but I'm pinning the heck out of it. Let's try and flatten that as much as I can. Stretch it a bit. And let's get a pin there. Okay, let's try and sew this. I can kind of see that it's going to want to do a pleat here. So let's, let's try and flatten that already. Maybe I'll try and pick it out a bit. Maybe I'll actually add another, another pin there. Oof, yeah, it wants to do that. I'm going to have to stretch it out a little bit there. There, let's, I think that flattened it out a bit more. If you need more pins, use more pins. So there we go. Here is the crazy, crazy town bit. Oh yeah, it's a lot like um, a sleeve or a, a for a blouse top. 
So, well, with that, you're maybe doing a little bit more easing, a little bit, a little, even more stretching and, and pulling. This, we're just doing it just a little bit. So, okay, let's, let's do this. Yes, slow, slow. I'm going to slowly sew this and slowly um, go around the curves and, and we'll, we'll give it a try here. All right. Get this puppy on. Take my shoe off. <laughs> okay. And you know what? Let's, let's start with a, a lead or two for good measure. Okay. Look, it already wants to be moving on me. All right, so I'm going to lift it up. Man, I'm tempted to back tack here too. I wonder if I should back. I think I am going to back tack this too, just so it extra holds the beginning. So I'm going to just go a little reverse stitch and then forward again. All right, so ideally I'll have the needle down before pulling a pin out, but mine doesn't have the needle down feature, so if I miss it, um, I miss it. So slow. I'm trying to make sure that it's flat as I'm stitching. Or I'm going to pull the next one out. And I'm trying to do that quarter inch. Yep, this is my quarter inch foot. So actually, as I curve, the quarter inch is probably over here. I'm doing my best to sew a, a quarter inch seam allowance is, is all. And luckily, remember, I added that extra quarter inch to the, the, um, this white piece. So if I, if I do it a little bit more than a quarter inch on accident, um, we'll be fine. Okay, so I can see it might start pleating here, so I'm just kind of grabbing it, moving, moving the fabric a little bit. So there, the pleat went away. So I should be good still. All right, again, here's another thing that looks like it's gonna pleat. Let's pull on that, stretch it out. Almost there. Yeah, don't sew over your pins. All right, and I'm gonna add another little back tack just to make sure that it holds together there. I don't want it pulling out as I start um, moving this around. So let's snip and snip. Okay, let's check it out. All right, so you don't, when you're doing um, curves that fold out to be flat, you don't actually have to snip into it. So don't worry about that. And oh my god, it looks amazing! Okay, so there is our circle. Oh, it looks so good. All those extra pins um, were a great idea. I don't think we have any real puckers at all. So remember, that's from like stretching this top as like over it a little bit. So let's press that just to make sure it's um, we get it nice and flat here. All right, the seam allowance is gonna wanna go to, to the one side. So it'll be clear where that goes. Okay, so it did, <laughs> my fabric did stretch a little bit here, which is kind of goofy, but um, there we go. I think that looks fabulous. Uh, I think maybe when I pressed, I added a, little, a couple little pleats, but um, once this all gets sewn and washed and everything, I think it'll be great. Yep, so I did add the quarter inch here and here, so we will be able to trim it down a little bit. So yay, that's awesome. So I think that's all I'm gonna do tonight, guys, but let's let's kind of mock it up again, just because I wanna see. All right, so this guy will go there. Cute. All right. There's um, the top of the bowl. This guy will go there, it'll have a little centerpiece. A little gold in, in this. All right, here's the other side. Yeah, we'll get it in there kind of like that. Frame it up. Cute. All right, and then we have, I want to do this as, oh, I should put this fruit down first, but oh well. I want this bright one to be out front. And... 
This little guy can go behind him here. This guy will be tucked up here somehow. And then we got these two guys too, once they once we get them all circled up. Cute! All right, I like it. So I think we got pretty dang far. We got all our pieces cut out. We got one of our circle edges. So normally I would do both of these at once. I might even pin them both and then sew them both right away. But I wanted to show you guys how to do that foil method. So um, yeah, I, I would normally typically do all these at once too. But tonight I wanted to show both of these. So we got it going. Um, I think this was good progress. Uh, we should easily be able to do the rest of these circles and um, this guy and maybe even piece a lot of this together or at least start um, applying these. So um, you can applique these by hand. I think I'm going to just sew around the edge like like how we did the bird, that last bird. I think I'm going to, we're going to tuck the edges under like how we did here and then I'm just going to sew along the, the edge and then I can, with a sewing machine, so then I can get done. They can get done a bit faster. <laughs> so uh, I don't know when we'll work on this again. Maybe maybe Monday we'll pick this up again. I'm not quite sure yet. But all right, I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening. Hello. So thanks again for sticking with me a little later tonight. And sorry again uh, for not being there uh, yesterday. But here's, here's the size of these. They are so little, <laughs> all these pieces. But there, that is generally how you do the curved piecing. Here's the back, looking good, looking nice and flat. Without, I didn't have to trim, I didn't have to clip the edges or anything. It's still laying uh, pretty flat. But yeah, so imagine doing a whole quilt of curves like this. It would look so pretty, but man, I don't know if I could do that much pinning. For two little pieces though like this, I think we'll be fine. So awesome guys, uh, thanks for joining me again for this block. This is block 14 from the Splendid Sampler 2. I will get this up on YouTube. It'll live at Penguin and Fish Movies. Just scroll down and look for the row that says Splendid Sampler 2 and then each block is grouped um, by videos there. So uh, this will be up in about an hour and a half or so once it's done loading and uh, you can watch the replay there. And uh, links for the, uh, the scissors, for the uh, light table, a uh, better light table than this one. Mine's pretty old. Um, they're all in uh, uh, the post here, and they'll be in the post on YouTube as well. So have a great, fabulous weekend, guys, and uh, I will see you on Monday again. Good night!